Lord, the king, the king replied, if the Lord does not help you, where can I help, help for you? Where can I get help for you? From there, from the threshing floor, from the wine press. Then he asked her, what, what's the matter? She answered, this woman said to me, give up your son so we may eat him today and tomorrow we'll eat my son. So when, so we cooked my son and ate him. The next day I said to her, give up your son so we may eat him. But she had hidden him. When the king heard the woman's words, he tore his robes as he went along the wall. The people looked and there underneath he had a sackcloth of he had sackcloth on his body. He said, May God deal with me, may it ever so severely, if the head of Elijah's son of Shapa remains on his shoulders today. Now Elisha was sitting in his house, and the elders were sitting with him. The king sent a messenger ahead, but before he arrived, Elisha said to the elders, Don't you see how this, how this murderer is sending someone to cut off my son, to cut off my head? Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold it shut against him. It is not the sound of his master's footsteps behind him. While he was still talking to them, the messenger came down to him, and the king said, This disaster is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? Amen. That's a little history on, uh, on uh, what was going on in, in, in Israel or in Samaria um, at this time. Um, and I, I just wanted to give you that background so that you understand. They said that, uh, that it was so bad that, that this king, what did they say his name was? ben had or something like that? That he laid siege on Samaria. In other words, he surrounded the city of Samaria. I told you that Pueblo was supposed to be the ninth worst city in the nation. There's a lot of cities in this nation. You live in a bad city. You shouldn't have came to Pueblo. You should have stayed where you were. Because this is not a good place for you. You with me? And these, the devil laid siege on a city called Pueblo. There's a place in, in Revelations where it, it, and I can't remember what Dionysus or I don't remember what, what city he was talking about, but he said that that city was the, was the, um, um, like the seat, seat of Satan, where Satan laid, where Satan stood, where Satan lived. I believe that this city right here that we're living in is a place where Satan dwells. I believe that there's a lot of cities in our, you know, you have Denver as big as it is and as bad as it is, Springs, all the drugs and all over the valley, you know, down in the Manzanola area, Rocky Ford, and you guys, anybody who knows, knows how bad it is that way. Anywhere you go, Colorado's a, you know, I mean, a liberal state now. I mean, gay marriage and, uh, is accepted and, 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 and weed is, is, is accepted and all this stuff, and it's because that the devil is rampant. They said that this city is more, this state is more liberal than California. That's pretty bad. You with me? California might have the Hollywood stars and the surfboards and all this, but it's a very wicked state. This state is more wicked than that state. We allow anything and everything. We just do whatever. Whatever feels good. But I believe that right in the center is a city called Pueblo, Colorado. And I believe that the devil dwells in this city. And I believe that he's laid siege to this city. Just like he laid siege to this city of Samaria. And he didn't let no food or water come in. He let nothing go out. He had it surrounded. So bad this city was that they begin to sell donkey's heads. I mean, it's pretty bad on a donkey's head going for eight silver coins. Right? Some of you have the New Living Translation. What did it say in there? 
that a donkey's head went for what? Eight silver coins? Eighty. Eighty shekels. Eighty. But in, in the New Living Translation? Eighty pieces of silver. Eighty pieces of silver. And that the dove, it said in there a cup of seal, seed or something. But what it, what it says in the New Living Translation is that, uh, uh, I don't know how much, a cup or something of dove's poop. Dove's poop. How many want to go to lunch with Pastor? I need a cup of dove, dove's poop. It's good for you though. It's organic. What do they, they say they don't want to bread with the, with the gluca, gluten free? And that, that stuff's gluten free and, and all that stuff. How many want to go to lunch with me after? Get a cup of poop and some water. Not even water. There was no water there. That sold for how much? The dove's poop? Five pieces of silver. Five pieces of silver? Huh? That, that's a lot. That's a lot. Eight pieces of silver, they'd sell a donkey's head to you. Or 80, you said? Somebody said 80? That, well, the heads are pretty big. It got so bad in this city that the people were eating their own children. Could you imagine that? Today we're going to eat Oscar. Andre, yeah, to, no, Silas is tomorrow. And then Andres. Where's Lynch? I'll be the we're going to have him this weekend. And then we're going to go with Lex for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> God. We're selling our kids and we're... You know that there's people that are selling their babies and their children for dope? Yeah. 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 Exactly. You know that there's people that sell their kids to men and to people to get dope and money and stuff and do with them what you will. Jeez. Huh? So they can go shoot their dope, smoke their crack, drink their beers. You with me? Yeah. Leaving them unattended for people to molest them, to hurt them, to harm them. Huh? Yeah. They're eating their own children. This lady said, oh, we're going to eat my son today, and tomorrow we're at yours. And they agreed, and they killed her son and cooked it. How bad do you think this city was? Hmm? You with me? You know, I don't even want to get into all the different things we can talk about that people give up, people sacrifice, or even people kill because of an inconvenience. You understand what I'm saying? Huh? I can't afford to be pregnant right now. Let's just go see a doctor right up the street and we'll kill it for however much. Does anybody even know how much an abortion costs? I don't. I'm asking you. No, I don't. I don't know. You know what I mean? I've seen them movies and different stuff where they, you know, some of them even go to back alleys and have them done for a few hundred bucks or whatever in a back room somewhere, because it's an inconvenience. Oops. You with me? Yeah. And there's, there, you know, I mean, this, these people were eating their children. I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about this. You, you with me? And I'm, I'm like, this is, this is, I'm trying to get you to understand how bad things are, because see, when you live in, because we live in America, we, we live in, a, 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 even in Pueblo, Colorado, all you got to do is go down and get some food stamps. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Because yeah. yeah. look around, nobody looks here like you're thin. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> you too. <laughs> huh? Could you spam the camera that way? <laughs> you're going to see some buttons unbuttoned because they don't button no more. <laughs> Consoles hanging over the pants and sides, right? Yeah. And you got, you got yeah. some sides? Yes. Huh? What do they call love handles? And, oh, God. Huh? Put no pouch and... Oh, my God. <laughs> Too much hot Cheetos. And Pepsi. Taco Bell. Nobody looks like you're dying of starvation. A couple of you are thin. But you eat a lot. You yeah. With me? Yeah. yeah. Nobody, you know, we, we, we live in a society even in Pueblo, Colorado. All we got to do is go, you know, I mean, go stand out there with a sign. Yeah. And we'll get $100 in a matter of a few hours. Right. Yeah. How many of you get $100 a day for working as hard as you do? Yeah. Not too many people, right? Yeah. 
You work hard for your money. Can you mind standing out there and getting twice as much as you get, or even just more than what you get just for standing out there with a sign? Mm -hmm. We feel so sorry for them. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Uh, you with me? Yeah. But you know, even the dogs are overweight. You yeah. see, man, how does that homeless dude have two dogs and they're all eating and they got hamburgers and I didn't even get a hamburger today. And they're all overweight and you know what I mean? You see it? Yeah. Huh? It's true. You with me? Yeah. Their animals are overweight. Yeah. You go anywhere in Pueblo, you know what I mean? And, and, and listen, people are not dumb. You can talk to a homeless person, they'll tell you, Pastor, we ain't starving. Right. We know exactly where to hit and who to go to and what churches yeah. are giving this yeah. and oh, the, the, the food kitchen. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is go down there. They have good food. Sometimes, you know what I mean? You guys want to take your lady on a date. You just go to the food kitchen. <laughs> oh, babe, don't even trip. You know, I got this tonight. <laughs> I'm trying to impress her. So, you know what? I don't even carry your tray. No matter where you go, you're going to find food, <laughs> shelter. You, you, you may even find money. Yeah. You with me? We don't have to sell your kid. Yeah. Yeah. These people were so bad. They said oh, that one lady who came to the king said, King, help me. We, we ate my son yesterday, and today's her turn, and she hit her boy. Yeah. She, won't, she won't feed him. She won't feed us. With the, how bad is the city yeah. when you're giving your children to eat? Yeah. You with me? You're eating your kids, and, and, and you know what I mean? And then they're burning you, and they're lying to you, and that happens. Yeah. Yeah. You with me? It happens all the time, and you know what I mean? You, you know, I could give you scenarios in Pueblo of what happens, and how bad it is, and our kids are dying, our kids are overdosing on drugs. Yeah. Yeah. They used to be good, it used to be sports, in sports, used to be in school, doing all this. Some of you don't understand because it hasn't hit you right. yet. Could you imagine your boy or your daughter tonight in a few years, a drug addict on heroin living over here on 4th Street? You going to work every day and driving by and, see, and wondering, can I see my son today? Am I going to see my son, a crackhead, running the streets filthy, dirty, hasn't showered in days, asking me, Dad, can I have some money? See, you don't understand. It's yeah. just that you don't understand because right. you think it ain't going to come near you. Right. It's not going to happen to you. Yeah. You with me? Or your son will be in the ICU or your son will be in a nursing home or your daughter will be in a nursing home because they can't, they, you, they got sick, something affected their nervous system and now they're just a vegetable in a bed and it couldn't happen to you, right? It couldn't happen to you. Hmm? Come on. That's right. That's right. Huh? These people were eating their children. They went to the king for help, and sometimes people come to us. I remember standing there with crackheads or, or, or heroin addicts telling me, Pastor, I'm a heroin addict. I don't know what to do. What, what, what can you say to help me? What can you do? And you're standing there like, you know, I could pray for you. I, I, you know what I mean? But I don't have a home here in Pueblo, so I don't know what to do for you. We could send you away. But feeling so helpless. Because everybody looks to you for help. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. See, it's easy yeah. for you guys, because you guys just come in here and sit here. Yeah. You come in church, and I was telling them Monday night, or Friday night for prayer, you guys come in here for, even for prayer. You pray, and then you go. And the, these people are out of your mind and out of your sight. All you can think about is your home and your money. It's all you think about. My, my checking account. My health. You don't care about anybody else's health. Right. You with me? Yeah. We go to nursing homes. I've been in nursing homes all week. Different people or even in the hospitals visiting people. And you see these people that are so sick and they're, they're all jacked up or even in the emergency rooms. Yeah. But it ain't affecting you, so you don't have any because you're out there. The malls, shopping, you know, Thanksgiving dinners and washing your cars and buying new shoes. And you don't care about anybody but yourself. Hmm? These people were in diet. But see, when the devil comes against you, yeah. then you come to me for help. Yeah. Pastor, pray for me. Pastor, I don't know what to do. What do you think? Well, what do you mean? What do I think? You already made your decisions. Right. And it's because of your decisions that right. you made, no matter how much Pastor Susan pleads right. with you, give to the Lord. He's going to bless your finances if you do, and you still don't. Yeah. 
You right. sit there during the offering and watch the kids go up. You don't give a dime in that thing. Yeah. Right. Hmm? Well, I gave my tithes in the first of the month. There's, there, we, we have an offering every service. Right. And there should be every single time that you have something in your hand to give. Right. Yeah. Something in your hand to sow. God, give this. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Because there's people that are in need. See, you don't see the need. You think you're paying us. Yeah. You think you're giving to us. Come on. Yeah. The purses right. and the, the coats that Pastor wears and stuff. I'm the one pays for I'm the one that puts his. You don't put nothing in my tank. Right. Right. You don't put nothing in my stomach and you don't put nothing on my back. Right. The only thing you give is to the house of the Lord. Right. And if it's cents and if it's a dollar bill, here you go, Lord. This is all my love for you because I'm about me. Yeah. Got my new phone. Updated my what it megabytes or what or what is it? The, yeah, the storage. The storage and the gigabytes yeah. and <laughs> make sure I have enough to watch my sports and everything else and the games and make sure my my, my, my games are they're fast enough because I need them fast so I can keep up with everybody else in the nation who's playing on the game with me. Right. And you're still playing games. I said, you're still playing games. You haven't even grown up yet. How old are you? You've been saved, and you see, and it's still about you. You don't see the people that are out there giving their children up. Some of you have beautiful grandkids. Could you imagine being such a mess of crack and heroin that, you, that the, your daughters or sons are giving your babies to some man or to somebody else to have their way with so you could smoke a little bit more crack? Hmm? Come on, somebody. Huh? And you're worried about your life? Maybe it hasn't hit you yet. But I'm telling you that hard times are coming to each and every one. What are you going to do when it happens to your house? What are you going to do when it's your son in prison? Hmm? Because I don't care how much oh, I believe and I'm praying for him and all. I don't care. We live in Satan's throne here. And I'm telling you what, they're going to die. Hmm? They're going to end up in a place you don't want them to be as long as you're so focused on yourself. You with me? Maybe your kids ain't hurting, but there's many kids out here that are dying on our streets. Huh? It, 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 this isn't right. That's what we're talking about this morning. That's the title of this message. This isn't right. Second Kings chapter 7. Look, just on the very next verse. Verse 1 and 2. Elisha replied, listen. Remember it was eight, eight, 80 shekels or 80 coins? Yeah. For a do, do, donkey's head and what? what uh, how many for dove's poop? Five shekels for dove's food. Look what the prophet of God said, because he was listening to the Lord. The man, the king was after him to kill him. The king was so confused when the lady came and said, the king, help me. She said when he ripped his clothes because they were eating their children, he didn't know what to do. She noticed underneath he had sackcloth and ashes. Which means it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you might be wearing this morning, all decked out and wearing your best or whatever you call it. Yeah. Underneath, I don't know what to do. You can come to church and you can act like you have your life in order. Yeah, that's right. You with me? Yeah. But underneath, right. you don't know what to do. Right. Could you imagine this morning, and I know it's not you, but could you imagine this morning maybe somebody on YouTube coming to church and you're struggling with sin? Amen. Amen. You're struggling with something in your life and Amen. put your nice clothes on and you come to church and yeah. Yeah, you don't know what to do. Right. You can sing the songs and right. do all that, but you're having right. a hard time. Yeah. And then people know you're a Christian, so they're coming to you for yeah. advice. Yeah. And you're saying, God, what in the world? Yeah. What am I going to tell these people? I feel so unworthy. I feel so unholy. I don't know what to do. I know I'm a Christian and I can suppose I have it all. But I know. What do you want me to do to help you? You with me? He's like, what do you want me to do? I'm not God. 
He said, I don't know what God did. What, what, you ask God to help you. I can't help you. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. And a lot of times what we do is when we get in these situations, and believe me, I've been there before, yeah. where you don't know what to do yourself, yeah. and maybe you don't have it all together. And you don't know what to tell people, and you're telling them, I don't, what do you want me to do for you? How do you want me to help you this morning? I don't know what to say to you. I'm kind of having a hard time myself. Right. Yeah. Come on. Right. Yeah. He, what did he say at the very end? He said, maybe this is from the Lord. Yeah. Maybe all this stuff is from God. But you know what? God don't make you eat your children. Yeah. Don't you know there's a devil, and he's seated yeah. upon the city of Pueblo? His throne is in this city. Isn't there a cause to pray, guys? Is there a cause to pray? Just a couple nights a week. We only come for an hour. You don't think you're going to make time to come and pray if this is the devil's den, if Satan is seated upon this city. You can't make just... Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1 and 2 said this. Elisha said, listen to this. Listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. By this time tomorrow, in the markets of Samaria, six quarts of, of, of choice flour will cost only one piece of silver. Six quarts for a, a piece of silver. He said, in 12 quarts of barley, so we can make our tortillas and our bread. Barley grain, he said, will cost only one piece of silver. See, they had the dollar menu back then. <laughs> when God blesses, God knows how to bless you good. Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen, Pastor. Amen. 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 Pieces of silver. He said, the officer assisting the king. See, this is some of your attitudes this morning. Be careful. Be careful with that attitude some of you have in your heart this morning. This officer said, or this Christian sitting there at New Hope Ministries said this to the king, to the pastor. Amen. Amen. Said this to the, uh, to the man of God. That that couldn't happen. Now this is where I knew that this message was from the Lord. When we sang, let it rain, open the floodgates of heaven. That couldn't happen, even if the Lord opened the opened the windows of heaven. That couldn't even happen if God did it Himself. Some of you he lost hope. Some of you have no faith. You don't believe God can do what He said He can do. Some of you you might not have anything but faith, and that's all you have anymore. And I'm telling you what. God's about to do something great in the city. Amen. 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 Because a lot of times we put the pressure on the pastor, on, on the ministers, on the, on, you know what I mean? Sometimes you come in here and you, you know, you're feeling all this. I'm like, this ain't my kingdom. I just work here. You with me? God, what's going on? We've been praying, we've been doing this, but it's all in God's timing. I'm not God. You with me? I can't make things happen. But God knows what he's doing in Pueblo, Colorado. Look what, he's, look, what, look what he said. That This man said this. This couldn't happen even if the windows of heaven opened. Or if, or if the Lord opened the windows of heaven. But Elisha replied to this man. Be careful this ain't your attitude this morning. Because these words are for you. You will see it happen with your own eyes, but you, you won't be able to eat any of it. The, you know why? Because that famine affects you too. And because of your unbelief, you're going to watch everybody enjoying this blessing from God, and all you're going to be able to do is watch it. You're not going to enjoy it. You're not going to eat it. You're just going to watch it because of your unbelief. You with me? Second Kings chapter, or the next verse, the very next verse, we're reading verse 3 through 8. Now watch this. This is where God turns the tides. And he used some people like you and me, jacked up at New Hope Ministries. Lepers whose lives are falling apart. How many of you this morning, man, you know what? 
I know I'm here and I'm at church and this and that, but Pastor, my life's jacked up. I'm falling apart. I don't know what to do anymore, and that's okay because that's the kind of people God uses. So you don't use these religious devils that right. walk in all dressed up, decked out, thinking they're all that in a bag of chips. He don't use people like that. He used people like you that have a little bit of faith, an ounce of hope, whose lives are a mess, who are going through hell, and you don't know what to do. And, 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 and the city that are eating dog, donkey's heads and dog poop, and even their own children, have kicked you out. You're not even allowed to go in there because your life's so jacked up. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Say, so I'm glad I'm not a leper this morning. I'm glad I'm in, I'm at least in the city walls while you're, you're dying there. Yeah. At least these lepers have a chance to run. Right? Yeah. Watch what happens here. Yeah. He says, now there were four men with leprosy sitting at the, en sitting at the entrance of the city gates. They couldn't even let them in. Remember Pastor Susan said the other night that lepers were outcasts? Yeah. Yep. Lepers were thrown out. Lepers were not allowed in the city. Lepers couldn't even come and get food. They couldn't shop at Walmart. They couldn't do anything. They were thrown outside and left to run the, the, the mountains and fend for themselves, find their own food. And, and, and you know what I mean? It's, sorry, bro. That's your problem. Yes. Right. Hmm? These men sat at the gates and they said this. To one another, at least they were smart enough to say this. Why should we sit here waiting to die? Come on, somebody. Yeah. That's what pastor's telling you this yeah. morning. Yeah. Why are we sitting here, just sitting here waiting to die? Right. Yeah. Hmm? Right. They asked each other, why are we sitting here waiting to die? We will starve if we stay here. But with, the, but with the famine in the city, we will starve if we go back there. So we might as well go out uh, and sur go out and surrender to the, to the Arameans, to the enemy that had surrounded the city. Let's go uh, surrender to these guys' army. He said, if they let us live so much, the better. But if they kill us, we would have died anyway. Yeah. So at twilight, they, they set out. Now twilight, what is that, in the, in the early morning? Yeah. The sun's about to come out, even the stars are still shining. These guys got up early in the morning, they set out for the camp of the Arameans. But when they came to the edge of the camp, no one was there. It says, for the Lord had caused the, the Aramean army to hear the clatter, to hear the clatter of, of, uh, of, of speeding chariots and the, and the galloping of horses and the, and the sounds of a great army approaching. Come on. Amen. These four lepers... They had no hope, they had nothing, but they said, hey, as long as we stay where we're at, as long as we stay in this condition, just doing what we're doing, the same old, same old, I told them the other night, prayer is not enough. Right. You must pray, and then you must go do something for the Lord. Yeah. As long as you stay here, sitting in church on Sunday morning, and thinking this is it, you're going to die too. You can't do that. Faith without works is dead. Right. How do you see somebody that's hurting your city, hurting everything going on, and you don't do nothing about it, right. and call yourself a born-again, spirit-filled Christian, right. and don't do nothing about it? I told him the other night, I said, you know what? You have your turkey dinner, and you invite everybody that you know to come to your house and speak the gospel to them. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them what God has done for your life. Don't just eat and fellowship around pumpkin pie. Right. Tell them, make it a purpose. On purpose, you win Amen. souls, not by accident. Amen. Huh? Amen. 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 There's many people Amen. out there who don't have anybody. Do something about it. Well, what are the pastors? No worry about what we're doing. Right. Mind your own business. Do something for God. Where's your ministry at? 
Every single one of you have a ministry this morning. Don't you look and say, oh, what is the church doing? I guess we're not doing nothing. Yeah, you're not doing nothing. That's the thing. Come on. These men got up from where they were. They said, we're going to at least go, 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 go hand out flyers or do something. We're not going to sit here and talk about our situation. We don't have money. We don't have this. We don't have that. I can't do this. I can't. They said, we're going to get up. We're going to go do something. And as them guys falling apart, listen, leprosy, you physically fell apart. Ears would fall off. Skin would fall off. Your life was a mess. Nobody wanted to be around you. But they're walking, and as they're doing something, Man. they're walking forward. God begin Man. to sound chariots yeah. and horses and armies. And come on, and warfare. And the Arabian armies, they heard, they said, oh my God, they've hired people to come after us. And it was just four Cliffords walking to go get some food or go beg for assistance or help. But God blessed their feet. He blessed the work of their hands. He blessed them as they walked, as they did something. You wonder today, why am I not blessed, God? Because you're not walking by faith. You're sitting in church expecting me to do you something. Expecting to hear a message that's going to make you move. Listen, if you ain't moving now, it's for me. Only God can move you. Huh? This message is to stir your heart. No matter who you are, you might be here. Listen, you might not even have a job. Right. You're broke as a joke. And come on, everybody, they run from you. They think you're going to borrow more money. Right. Huh? Right. And God said, Miha, I'll use you. Amen. Miha, I know what they say about you. And I know you have nothing to offer anybody. But if you let me, I'll use you. Amen. Come on. Yeah. And these people with all these jobs and all this money, they're distracted and they're doing nothing for God. Sometimes God brings you to a place where you have nothing so you realize, God, my hope is in you. Amen. I have nothing else, God. Amen. I have nothing to do. My life's a mess. It's falling apart. And God's like, you're right where I want you to be. I remember when God found me in the hospital. Blind, bro. All jacked up. Hopeless. My friends didn't even like me. I had nobody by my side but my mother. Come on. And I remember God said, Miho, if you let me, I'll save you and I'll use you. And I'll show this world what God can do with a leper like you. Amen. 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 God likes to show off. That's why he allows you to get as low as you are. He likes to show off. Huh? To show how bad he is. He said, I don't care how bad he is. They're selling doves, dung, they're selling heads, and even eating their children. But I said, by this time tomorrow, within 24 hours, you're going to be, man, how many quarts of fine flour? He didn't say some messed up, jacked up flour, some stuff that's left over, finest flour you can buy. What is it? Eight quarts for a buck. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 12 quarts of, of barley for your for your breads and you can freshly bake them breads for a buck because I said this Amen. and I'm going to use four people whose lives are all jacked up to show how big God is Amen. come on somebody Amen. for the Lord had caused the Aramean army to hear the, ch- the, cl- the, the clatter of speeding chariot, not slow ones. <laughs> Come on, speeding like you like your internet. Yeah. That's all the Lord hears from you is the speed of your internet. <laughs> <laughs> and the galloping of horses. Huh? All your new shoes. And the sound of a great army approaching. He says, the king of Israel has, has hired the Hittites and the Egyptians uh, to attack us. They cried to one another. So they, so they, uh, so they panicked. How about, you think it's about time the devil panics? Right. So they panicked and they ran into the night, amen, abandoning their tents, horses, Donkeys, amen, and everything amen. else as they fled amen. for the for their lives. Amen. He says, when the when the men with leprosy arrived, 
at the edge of the, of the, of the camp, they, were, they went into one tent. Look, look, they broke in, man. They broke into one of the houses. They went into one of the tents. They had no authority to do that. They did anyway. They're East Siders. I said, they're East Siders. They went into one of the tents without permission. After another, eating and drinking wine. Come on. Yeah. Mad Dog 2020. <laughs> he says, and, the, and they carried off silver and gold and clothes and hid it. I told you they're East Siders. <laughs> they went and got wine, clothes, gold, silver. Come on, man. Come on. They went and they, went and they, they hid it and then they went back to hit the house again. They got everything, man, from that tent. Huh? Yeah. They're East Siders, man. <laughs> Amen. But my point is found in verse 9. You with me? Yeah. Let me? Let me just set this up for you. These men, their lives were all jacked up. They were a mess, right? Yeah. They were a mess. And it is hot in here. <laughs> and God saved them. Amen. Yes. They went and found no one there. In other words, they went and they found a new life. Found a little church on the east side of Pueblo called New Hope Ministries. Amen. They came in and they said, man, there's blessings in this church. There's food there, something I've never even heard before. People come in here all the time and say, man, Pastor, your words touched our hearts. I've never heard things like this. I've never seen things like this. And they found gold in faith, refined by the fire of God. Clothes, new armor. Come on, put on the whole armor of God. They're walking in righteousness now. And they have peace in their hearts. They're saved. They've got the Word of God. They've got faith. They're living this new life. They're saying, man, this is awesome. I can't believe it. And, and then what happens is they get tripped up and they start just enjoying the blessings of God, their salvation, this new move. And they're sitting up in their churches all fat and sassy and sitting, man, this is awesome. This is you know, give your tithes and then God will bless you. Amen. We want more money. That's why some of you give. I think this is the slots. Yeah. Black Jack, right. Vegas or Cripple Creek. She said, if I give, it's going to be given and be good measure. 30, 60, 100 fold. Yeah. So I'm going to give. Come on, because I want the blessings of God. Amen. And now you were a crackhead. You were a drunkard. You were a pillhead. Right. You were all jacked up. Some of you, I know you can't understand that. So let me bring it to you a little bit. Maybe you're a selfish individual. Maybe you were an adulterer, a divorcee. Come on. Oh, come on, somebody had committed an abortion. Yeah. And you did this stuff in your life because you were too good and didn't want to tarnish your reputation, so you got rid of it. Come on. And you come to church and God forgives you. Right. And God heals you. Right. He takes away that pain. Yeah. He says, you know what, my son died. And don't you worry about your baby. Right. And babies are in heaven, baby. Right. And babies are in heaven. Huh? Yeah. Come on. That's right. Huh? And after all this, and you're sitting in church, and you're healed, and you're blessed, and you're saved, and man, you're enjoying the Christian life. But these four lepers came to verse 9, and it says this. Finally, they said to each other, and I, I could see these four lepers, oh, man, wearing somebody else's sweatsuit with some gold chain. Some some Nike airs with the Oscars, <laughs> huh? They're kind of small, but they hey, the Nikes, the Air Jordans. I'm sorry, excuse me. You don't wear Nikes. He wears Air Jordans. <laughs> and they're sitting there. And they're just eight. Oh man, they're, they're just they're fat now. They have a pansa. They look like the Ethiopians because the bones they're all flocked, but their pansa is like that sticking out from all the food. Yeah. And they're at church. They're sitting there hearing pastor's message. Yeah. And they said this. Yeah. This is what I said the other night. Finally, they said to each other. Remember they were saying to each other just a while back. 
We're going to die. <laughs> now they're all fat and sassy. But they have the sense that their lives are falling apart. Even though their lives are falling apart, they have the sense within them to say, Amen. This is not right. This is a day of good news. Of what? Good news. This is a day of good news, and we aren't sharing it with anyone. No. We're just living the blessed life. Because guess what? Although I was all that, now I have a job. Come on. And I even got me an education. Yeah. Come on. Preach it. Hmm? Yeah. I went to college online. Come on. And I'm smarter than you now. Yeah. Huh? Got me an education, and I'm moving up, Pastor. I'm moving up. I'm growing in finances. I'm growing in blessings. I'm growing in new clothes and new cars and new homes. And I'm blessed. And these four lepers had enough sense in themselves to say it's not right, bro. Yeah. After all God has done for you, right. it's not right that right. you sit here in church alone. Right. That you have this. You know, I said the other night, I said, you know what? Your little five-minute devotion before work. Hmm? Yeah. And Lord, bless my day. Lord, thank you for my food. Come on. Yeah. Thank you for what you've done for me and my family. Yeah. We're healthy and happy. And, come on. Yeah. Man, our cars have gas and our food, the fridge is full, full of food. <laughs> we have clothes on our back and... Thank you for my job, Lord. Amen. We go to work. We laugh with the sinners. Come on. We, we do what we need to do. Come home. And all we're going to think about prayer. Oh, man, I ain't got time for prayer. I'm tired, man. They don't do nothing all day. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I got, I'm a worker. That's what you think. But it's true work. Hmm? They said, it's not right for us to do this. This is a day of good news. Why did God save you? So you can come and sit up in some church? Nope. Now, don't get me wrong. Church is very important. Amen. You need to go to church. Yeah. But the only reason you go to church is so that you can eat and get fed. Like you go to, the, to a restaurant to eat so you can get food. I said the other night, food is energy. Food is to provide you energy so you can go work. You don't work. Come on, some of you can't even fast one whole day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go to the vending machine and get me something to drink or something to eat, Pastor. You don't understand. I, oh, I'm sensitive. I'm one day to fast, not even a whole day. Oh. <laughs> huh? That shows you who your God is right there. He said in the last days their stomachs will be their God. <coughs> and he didn't mean just food, he mean the gluttony of life. Yeah. The greed and the envy and the come on selfishness and all that. Yeah. Hmm? <coughs> These people were eating, they were blessing. <coughs> they were experiencing this great blessing, but they said, it isn't right. The other night for prayer, God showed me that and he gave me this message in prayer. Yeah. So I'm telling him it's not right. Not right what you're doing with all your money and you don't even pay tithes. Right. Come on. Yeah. You don't even see the need to help your local church. Right. Keep the doors and the lights and the heat on. And keep, come on. Hmm? Yeah. All you can think about is your homes. Right. Paying your bills. Well, you don't understand we have a high heat bill. Yeah, we have two. Yeah. Two high ones. Our house and this church. Yeah. Wow, well, my water bill. We have two. Electricity, we have two. Amen. And we don't even have a job like you. Right. We're not rolling. Yeah. We're not making it rain on anybody. We're like the ones that get, you know, after the harvest, we go by and see, hey, there's one there. Get that. You know, <laughs> they threw a dollar. Get that one. Hey. I told the barber the other day because I paid him all in ones. I said, man, he goes, man, I go, I said, you know, I'm a pastor, right? He goes, man, he, he looked all the ones. I said, yeah, they told me at a restaurant, me and my wife one time, a woman asked us, I don't mean to pry or I don't mean to be disrespectful, but are you guys drug dealers or pastors? 
And we look and say, why in the world would you say that? She goes, all the ones. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> A <laughs> I told my wife, I said, baby, you might have to go hit that pole. <laughs> Look down, man. Look down with the Lord. I'll go hit that thing. I don't think they want to put dogs in any kind of change and tomatoes and stuff like that. Verse 9 says. Verse 9. He said, it's not right. And then this is a day of good news. And we, are, we aren't sharing it with anyone. We aren't sharing this good news that God did, that God blessed us, that God saved us with anyone. If, watch this, I want you to see this, pay attention. I hope some of you got your Bibles. If we wait until morning, if we don't do something today, or I'll do it tomorrow. He said, if we wait till tomorrow, this is what will happen. Some calamity will, will, uh, some ca calamity will certainly fall upon us. I wish you had that mindset to see that. Yeah. That if you don't do something with your faith, something bad is going to happen. Yeah. Why? Because you have the answer right. to these people out here, and you did nothing with it. Right. Hmm? Yeah. Some calamity will come up and fall upon us. Come on. They said, come on. They said, let's go back to our city. Let's go back to our families, that we, our, 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 our old friends. Let's tell them. Amen. Tell the people. Amen? Amen? At the palace. Let's go tell the leaders. Guess what? We found a, a watering hole. He says, so they went back to the city and they told the, the gatekeeper uh, what had happened. We went out to the Aramean camp, they said, and no one was there. The, the horses and the donkeys were, tell, were, were, were tethered, and the, and the tents were all in order. But there, was, there wasn't a single person around. Then, then the gatekeeper shouted, the news to the people in the, in the palace. The king got out of bed. The king was so depressed he was in bed. Amen? In the middle of the night and told his officers, I know what has happened. Now listen, when you get in a mess, sometimes your mind is deceived. Yeah. He said to himself, he said to these people, I know what's going on here. The Arameans know that we are starving. So they have, they have left their, their camp and they have hidden them in the fields. See, you can give people good news and they'll just, they'll find a way to, to figure it out that it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. He says that they are expecting us to leave the city and, and, and then they will take us alive and capture the city. <laughs> One of his officers re uh, replied, we we had better send out uh, scouts to check into this. Let them take five of the, of the remaining horses. If something happens to them, it will be no, it will be no worse than if they, they stay here and die. Die with, with the rest of us. So two chariots went with horses went uh, were prepared and the, and the king sent some uh, scouts to see what had happened to the, to the Arameans, to the Aramean army. They went all the way to the Jordan River following a trail of, of clothing and equipment that the Arameans had thrown away in their, in their mad rush to escape. Man, they found all kinds of stuff. He said, the scouts returned and told the king about it. Then the people of Samaria rushed. Now, I told you they were from the east side. They were Puebloans. <laughs> they rushed out and they plundered the Aramean camp. Amen. So it was true that 
Six quarts of choice flour were sold that day for one piece of silver for only a buck, and twelve quarts of barley grain were sold for one piece of silver, just as the Lord had, had uh, promised. Amen. Amen. The king appointed his officers to control the traffic uh, at the gate, but he, he pointed his officer, but he was uh, knocked down and trampled to, the, to, to death as the, pe as the people rushed out. Remember the officer? Yeah. That said, this can't happen even if God opened the windows of heaven. Yeah. He was put there to control traffic. You seen the black, you seen the, the what is it, the Black Friday or whatever? Yeah. The sales? And they have they have a mattress one or something where that guy's he puts a mattress on man and they knock him back and they just trample <laughs> over him and stuff like that. That's what happened to this big mouth, huh? Yeah. The one that had no faith over there at New Hope Ministries. Right. The one that didn't believe when the pastor was preaching. That's right. The one that said even God Himself couldn't do it. Yes. Hmm? And I want to I want to stop right there just for the sake of time, but. But this guy was trampled that day, and it said, and so it came to pass that when that what the what the prophet of God said, the man of God said, you will see it with your eyes, but you won't eat of it. This man was run over and killed to death that day. Hmm? That city was blessed. That city, you know God loves Pueblo. Amen. I said, Do you know God loves Amen. Pueblo? Amen. God wants to save our city. He wants to save every one of these people that are struggling and hurting. Amen. God is going to do it. Not the king, not the pastor, not you, not anybody else. God is the one that's going to do it. But he needs a, about four knuckleheads. Amen. Huh? Amen. We might have to have two guys and two girls because some of you men won't budge. Amen. I don't know about this, Pastor. Go ahead, ladies. You go to war here. I'm going to sit here with my feet up and watch my games. Not even God can move them. So some of you ladies, you might have to step up. Even though your lives might be falling apart or messed up or jacked up or you don't know what in the world you're going to do. God says, don't you. Let me use you. All messed up, all jacked up, falling apart. Let me use you. Let me use your feet. I'll anoint it. The devil won't know what hit him. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. I said, the devil won't know. Listen, I'm not happy now. So don't get all in your Bible where you're so busy. You're not even listening to the end of the message. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Wake up. Tell your neighbor, snap, bro. Time that you start listening and stop being so distracted. You're doing everything else, but you're, you're missing God. God's trying to talk to you this morning. He wants to use you. He wants to bless Pueblo through you. Who in their right mind would look at this church and say, God is going to use this little church to reach a city for God? Who would even think that if you drive by one of the biggest cities in our, the biggest churches in our city, you say, God's going to use anybody, baby. He's going to use that beautiful building over there full of people, not some little church over there on the east side with people yeah. whose lives are a mess right. yeah. people whose lives have been all trashed and you come on you're the outcasts yeah. Yeah. huh yeah. you're the ones they threw out yeah. asked you to leave their churches yeah. <laughs> huh? they can't, they can't. i had one girl here terry you were with me one day that lady with last coke giveaway she came and she said i, I was at the church down the street, and she said, and, and the ladies were looking back at me like I was trash. She said, I felt so uncomfortable. She said, I don't know if somebody even said something to her. She, she was just got out of prison, and she was all messed up, you know what I mean? And I said, listen, you fit right in here. Hmm? So you fit right in. Even though, even though they fit right in, some people still won't come. Still doing their own thing. But well, one day they will, because there's plenty of seats for you guys. Stand with me this morning.